This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 312 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show, Cold Mental Combos. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Our sponsors this week are Riding Warehouse and EasySignsOnline.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hail or high water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. Sit on down and laugh till your poop calls. It's time again for Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. I'm Glenn the Geek. And I'm Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. It's coming up, Helena. Everybody it's coming up. Write it down. <laughs> Two weeks from now, on Wednesday the 20th, Wednesday, August the 20th at 7 p.m., Helene and I will be hosting a live party. That's right. <laughs> it's going to be, that's what I'm calling it. I did a little a graphic I did. Party. I did a little graphic for it. It's a live party. It's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll have the links and tell you where to listen to it. Um, it's going to be the same system we use for our horses in the morning show. Same phone number and everything. And, and that is 347-637-3238. And what we want people to do is give us a call because we're having an anniversary party. It's just going to be Helene and I, no plan, no script, no outline, nothing. It's Jennifer's going to be manning the phones. We can take up the 500 callers at one time. Uh, we're encouraging our listeners to call in, past guests to call in, other hosts from the Horse Radio Network to call in, because it is our sixth year anniversary. As of, as of actually today, Helena, happy anniversary, because today, August the 8th, uh, 2008, was when we posted our first episode. Oh! Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Pour a cheerful toast and fill it, happy anniversary. But be careful you don't spill it, happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. Oh my gosh. That's right. As this show is coming out, August the 8th, it's our sixth year anniversary. We're going into our seventh year. I can't even believe we've been doing this for six I years. Know. I can't. I can't even. I, I do. I've done nothing for six years. <laughs> so much has oh. happened in your life, and listeners who are regular listeners know what a lot of that is. And then we've moved about eight times in six years. So, um, you know, there's been a lot that's happened in both of our lives and our lives. I of our know. Listeners Holy then. cow. I know. Oh my gosh. Talk about like major life accompaniments. Our <laughs> listeners have come along with some big stuff for us. They certainly have. They certainly have. And you realize we're going to also, by that point, we will be over 3,500 episodes for all the shows and over 5,000 guests. Oh my gosh. You know what we need to do? <laughs> I don't know if you can do this, but for the live clip, we need to sh live show, we need to play a clip of our very first episode. <laughs> Oh, we need to do that bad. for every for every <laughs> anniversary. Oh my God! If you think we're bad now, yes. you should have heard us six years ago. <laughs> we were like a bunch of dorks. We oh. had no idea what we were doing. But we all oh, believe me. I will have a clip or two. Don't worry about that. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, if you can't call in that night, if you're not free to listen live, we will put it out on all the feeds. We're going to put it out on all the feeds for all the various shows. But if you can't call in live, we want you to call in to our voicemail line and leave us a vo happy anniversary voicemail. We want to hear from as many listeners as we can. And the voicemail line is 859-951-2022. That's 859-951-2022. We'll be posting all kinds of posts on Facebook, and we'll put it on our website as well. But, we, you know, there really is truly no plan. We're going to talk to whoever calls, and we're just going to have a good time hanging around, being with each other, and having a little party. We'll being with each other and having a little party. That was what that was our goal for the Horse Radio Network right. when we started <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much what it We started. just wanted to be with each other and have a little, a little party. party. And we'll have alcoholic beverages. Now, we can't share them with you. You'll have to get your own. But it's bring your own bottle. Um, <laughs> bring your own bottle. Bring your own bottle or mug. Yes, or whatever works. Uh, yep. I don't know what Helena's drink of choice is this week. It changes every week, so it does. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be by then. Um, 
But I'll have my wine cooler here. I'll have my wine cooler. I'll be ready to go. Okay. What, what kind of wine cooler do you drink? Uh, I, I use homemade. I drink. I make homemade ones. Just oh, uh, moonshine. Yeah, I make homemade. <laughs> <laughs> and that so that's August the twentieth, seven p.m. Eastern, and we will put we'll put a player on our website at uh, Stable Scoop, so you'll be able to listen live, and you'll. You'll just be able to go to staplescoop.com, click on it, and join in the party. You can also call to listen, too. You can call the 347-637-3238. As I said, we can take up to 500 callers, and, and a lot of people call into our morning show and just listen on the phone the whole time. So yeah, I hope you have free minutes if you do that. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Well, we have many people that do that at work. They mostly do it from work so they don't get caught. Yeah, um, <laughs> so they don't get caught. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> so uh, I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'll be excited about it th- th- that day. I'm you're, excited about it now, but... Yeah, your best friend and my wife will be there. She'll be manning the phones, and we're going to put her to work. Uh, Besties, baby. Yeah, yep, she'll join in on the conversation as well. Of course, we're talking about Coach Jen. And uh, I know some of the other hosts will be calling in, so it's just going to be fun. It'll be a party, and it'll be fun. Okay. So You sure? For, yep, I'm sure. Okay. How could it not be fun? Even if we have to sit there and nobody calls and we talk to each other for an hour, what the heck? It's fun either way. I I, seriously, that's how this, that's how the horse radio network got started. We were like, if no one listens, who cares? We'll have an hour of having fun. And that's exactly what's happened. It just, we just got lucky and it was just sort of coincidence that people started to listen in (laughs) and didn't get highly offended. (laughs) Or maybe they did, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, we don't know how many stopped listening. So, uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we have a big show planned for today. Today, we are going to be speaking to Ellie O'Brien, who's going to give us our training tip for the month. And then we're heading off to do something a little bit different. We have listener Deidre Howard on, and she sent us an email asking us a question. And we thought, well... That's a perfect question to be answered by our friend and equestrian mental skills coach, Tanya Johnson. So she's coming on to, they're going to talk to each other. We're getting them both on and hooking them up and hopefully uh, getting Deidre an answer. And then we have Brie Del Rosario coming back. I just like saying her name. Coming back from the riding warehouse with our Tack and Havoc product of the week. So all of that is going on on today's show. Helena and I have pretty much checked out because we're already thinking about the anniversary party. So, uh... So why, do you just want to get right away to uh, to Ellie, who's going to help us save the ship? Save the ship? Yeah, she's going to help us Our save the ship. Our sinking ship? Yeah, Our that's sh- Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right, uh, Ellie I'm O'Brien. Slow, I'm a little slow today. I haven't had my 2.22 p.m. cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere. Uh, All right. Here comes Ellie. As we do almost every month, we have Ellie O'Brien of Ellie O'Brien Finesse Equestrian Training back with us with her training tip of the month. Hello, Ellie. Hello. Thank you for having me back again. Are you at the barn? I am. I'm actually out at a dressage barn today, and I've been very lucky. I've been riding a pre-St. George horse and um, having some lessons and touching up my own skills, which has been really nice. Wow. Look at you. Pre-St. George, you're doing pee-offs and stuff. I have been. Wow. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Uh huh. Well, and how are things going now that you're in the United States? Do you see a big difference from Australia? Um, New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong country. But I do, um, I guess, like just adjusting to the heat and trying to work out schedules. And I mean, in New Zealand, our summers are not so hot that you can just kind of work through the day. But I found here that I've had to play around with um, working in the early mornings and working nighttime and juggling the um, thunderstorms and all of that sort of stuff. But I'm still really enjoying it, so it's good fun. You know, it, it's interesting because everybody says uh, Florida is so hot, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you live in the Carolinas, and I think mm-hmm. the Carolinas even get hotter than Florida. The Carolinas oh, really? can be brutal in the summertime. <laughs> can, yeah, yeah, it's just so muggy. You can hardly move. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. What other differences have you noticed from New Zealand now that you've lived here for a while? Um, I mean, a lot of it's the same. The horses are still the same. They still act the same. <laughs> um, I probably, the one thing that is really different is just that like horse wise and with the barns and whatnot, um, 
I mean, in New Zealand, most people, because horses are so accessible so and land, so most people have their own horses at their own house. Um, so just getting accustomed to the way of how barns work and having the horses stabled and people boarding at properties. So all of that's fairly new too. And having arenas to ride in. Most of the time we have um, like paddocks to ride in. <laughs> 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 that's nice. You're getting used to having footing, huh? Proper footing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing that's like super hard or nothing that's all muddy and squishy. <laughs> and <laughs> Helena, I saw on Ellie's uh, Facebook page the other day, because one of the other things Ellie is is a model, and it looked like you got a modeling gig here recently, and I saw pictures of you all dolled up. <laughs> I did, yeah. I, it was funny, actually. I was in getting, um, because I've been making my, my rope halters, and I was in getting some bling at one of the hobby shops, and um, a lady approached me to do some modeling work for her. So that was a bit of fun as well. Out of the blue, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's hard to uh, it's hard to to pay the bills just with horses, so you got to catch some other work where you can. That's right. It was the one day that I actually wore makeup and and pink lipstick, and and I picked up a modeling job. <laughs> <laughs> if I was in my riding boots and my messy hair, I don't know if I'd had the same effect. <laughs> <laughs> you look good all the time, Ellie. You look good oh. all the time. Well, Ellie, what are we talking about today? Well, today I thought I would um, chat about cold-backed horses. Uh, I did a post on my Facebook page a little while ago about this. Um, so I thought that I would just bring it up again and have a little bit of a discussion about it. What is a cold-backed okay. horse? Well, this seems to be something that's fairly common um, in both New Zealand and what I've seen over here. And um, quite often people will say to me, like, that they, you know, they'll put the horse's saddle on and it will have its back lifted up or, you know, some of them might even get to bucking. And, and they say, like, oh, you know, we have to spend 5, 10, 15 minutes lunging it to work it in to get the horse ready to be ridden. Um, so, I mean, that's not something ideal. We don't want our horse to have to feel that way about having a saddle on its back. And, and quite often, not all of us have the time to spend 15 or so minutes working it in on a lunge line, which, I mean, doesn't fix the problem. It's sort of, I mean, like, like I just said, it just works them into, into wearing the saddle. So I guess where I wanted to start was, a cold-backed horse is simply one that was let the initial awkward feeling of the saddle being put on for the first time or first few times become a habit, which is not really ideal in the long run. So when you go to start a horse, it's pretty normal for the horse to feel funny about having a saddle on its back. And some horses you'll get that no matter how much preparation work you do, they'll still want to get to bucking or, you know, lifting its back up and feeling uncomfortable about it. Some horses, I mean, they're not going to worry about it at all. So over the first few times of putting the saddle on the horse's back, it might show a few signs of wanting to bark or, or be a bit funny about it, and that's fine. But if you get to about the third or fourth session and it's still wanting to do that, that's when we as the trainer need to come in and start making it a little bit more difficult for the horse to want to bark or feel uncomfortable about the saddle. So how we do that is basically each time the horse gets tense and worried and gets to start bucking or humping around, all I simply do is change the direction that it's going. So by untracking the hindquarters and stepping the shoulders out onto the new direction, it helps the horse to get freed up through the shoulders and move its rib cage out of the way, which is generally where it's getting stuck and feeling uncomfortable. Mm. So, and quite often you'll hear like um, a horse that's tense and not wanting to go forward or, you know, being cold backed, so to speak, you'll hear them make grunting noises. And that's simply because they're holding all that breath inside them. It's a little bit like as if we, you know, held our breath and somebody thumped on our chest and, you know, you, you make a bit of a noise as that air comes out of your body. So... 
yeah, simply we're just going to keep on changing direction each time that horse gets tense. And as it goes forward nicely, then I'm going to leave it alone. So all I'm doing is making it difficult for it to to feel um, awkward about the saddle and making it feel really easy and nice and relaxed for the horse to go forward. So it quickly starts to figure out that going forward easily and nicely and moving with the saddle rather than against it is the best option to do than to fight against it. So that's, I guess that's the starting stages, how I combat um, not creating a horse that's cold-backed in the long run. If I'm working with a horse that has had this habit for quite a while and, um, and you know, the people have been trying to work through it by lunging it and they're not really, it's not really making a difference or anything, I'm basically just going to do the exact same thing as I would do with that young horse. Uh, work it on. Um, I don't like to call it lunging. I prefer to call it circling because I'm I'm quite often putting them in a smaller circle, really looking at the shape of their body, uh, making sure that they're going around that track nice and balanced, and changing those directions when it gets to feeling funny, and then letting it go forward nicely when it's feeling relaxed. So because it's because it's like a habit, just like with any habit, whether it's a people habit or a horse habit, it can take a little bit longer to break those things. But it's just about, I guess, reteaching um, the horses ha- the, how the horse moves to create new patterns in its body so that it does feel relaxed and it doesn't have to feel worried or stressed about the saddle being on there in the first place. Hmm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So what happens when you, uh, let's say you're new to a particular horse or um, you've done something or suddenly, so let's just say being cold back is a new situation for you, the rider, or Mm -hmm. for for the horse you're on. What are the first signs that, how, how can you prevent a problem from actually becoming a bigger problem? What are the first signs that you, uh, you said getting that locked up? You know, yeah, that are, or that, not that you look for, but um, for individuals out there who might not be as sensitive or who might not have as ed- an educated a feel as sure. you do, how can we identify when something's going wrong? So maybe one thing, like I always break it down into the smaller steps. When I'm approaching the horse with the saddle, does the horse get a little bit worried? When I'm putting the saddle on its back, is it getting worried? When I'm doing the girth up, is it getting worried? You know, is it tensing up in its body or its ears going back? Um, Is it getting grumpy in any way about it? Those are all small little signs leading towards the potential possibility that the horse is going to be cold backed. And again, doing up the girth is the horse... You know, does it lay its ears back and get twitchy or want to sn- um, snap at you? Um, that could be a sign that the horse is going to be um, cold back. So, yeah, like once you've got the saddle on and you've got the horse moving out, you'll see like the horse really tuck its back up and, and scoot its bottom underneath itself. And for some horses, some horses might even get to bucking the first few times like that you get it moving forward. Um, so those are all little things that we as riders can look out for um, for a horse that is cold backed. Very good. Well, thank you, Ellie. We appreciate you being here. Where can people find you if they want? Um, they can find me on Facebook under Ellie O'Brien Finesse Equestrian Training, or um, I've got a website as well, so you can just type that into Google and I should pop up. Very good. Thank you, Ellie. Get back to your lessons. Fantastic. Thank you very much. (laughs) Easy Signs Online is the official sign company of the Horse Radio Network. This week's product highlight are their personalized nameplates. Perfect for horse stalls, tack rooms, lockers, bedroom doors, dog kennels, or whatever you can think of. Choose from hundreds of online graphics to further customize the nameplates from EasySignsOnline.com. Made from one half inch thick solid PVC signboard, these colorful and unique one sided nameplates are three and a half inches by 16 inches and are designed for durability, long term indoor or outdoor use. They are only $39.95 each, and remember, free shipping on most orders over $100. Visit them at EasySignsOnline.com. 
Well, we have a special segment that we're, we were looking forward to today. We, we had a listener email from Deidre Howard from Virginia, sent us a listener email. And we got the email, and I said, you know, instead of Helene and I trying to get somebody on to answer it, or especially not us answering it ourselves, we should get an expert on to answer it. So in addition to Deidre Howard, we have on here a Equestrian Mental Skills coach and a friend of ours, Tanya Johnson, who's been, uh, Johnston, who's been on our show many times. And she is coming on to answer the question from Deidre. So let's say hi to them both. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Tanya. Hi. Deidre, tell us a little about yourself. You're from Virginia, and I, you must ride horses or the question wouldn't have come up. Yes, um, I have been leasing a horse for the past eight months. Previous to that, I owned a pony that I rode for 10 years and just outgrew it. And so um, rather than buying another horse again, I just wanted to try the leasing arrangement. And I have a great arrangement with the owner. She's nearby. I can basically take the horse and do whatever I want, trail her out for a monthly fee. So it's a wonderful situation. And what kind of horse? He's uh, summer is a sixteen hand draft cross, twelve years old. Oh, great! Okay, okay. Um, and nice. she was used as a lunge lesson horse for four years before the owner bought her. So she knows how to lunge. That's for darn sure. Yes, she does. <laughs> and she knows how to go slow. Slow at a steady pace. Well, we hope yeah. she knows how to go yeah, slow. That's what, that might be part of the problem. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah. Some of those, <laughs> some of those horses you put on the end of the line, and they just zip around. <laughs> and Deidre, so have you ever competed or anything? Oh, I've done um, local sh- shows. I've done dressage and uh, uh, sh- show jumping, and uh, you know, pro rides, JPR stuff like that. Okay, great. Terrific. Very good. Well, thank you for also listening to the show. We really appreciate that. Now, let's say hi to Tanya, who we've uh, talked to on a regular basis here. And uh, she has come on to talk about mental skills in riding and and coaching the equestrian several times. Hi, Tanya. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. So good to have you back. This took a little while to get fixed up because you've been busy doing clinics and lessons and earning a living. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just been um, a busy summer, but it's all good, all good stuff. So that's always it's always nice to be doing what you love to do as well as working in some, some family vacation and travel. It's just what summer's supposed to be, I think. Because you have a couple kids too, right? Yes, I have a daughter and two stepdaughters. So, so we have a full full group. Yes, three indeed. girls. Imagine, Helena, yeah. you have one. Imagine having three run around the house that age. I don't know. They might keep each other busy. <laughs> yes, <true. laughs> they do. It just gets a little loud is all, but that's fine. That's, that's fine. Okay. It's all fun. It yeah, can get I loud get with one, break. I think. <laughs> how, how old yeah. are they? So uh, they are 9, 11, and 13. Oh, yeah, that's loud. So, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They, you know, yeah, it's scary when when you start to hear furniture being moved around, like in another room. Yeah. Oh, you know, yes. the fort the fort building is a very popular activity at our house. Yes. So, Tanya, I know real, what you mean by I it. have a quick yeah. question for you that relates to that. So, do you, uh, as I understand it, when with psychologists and psychiatrists and stuff, none of that applies when they get home with their own kids. So, does the mental skills part of it come into play at all, or is it all out the window when it's your own kids? Um, well, definitely, I look for opportunities to sort of, you have to do the around the back door where they don't really think you're, you're offering any suggestions. Um, I recently took my daughter, Sophie, we went to a rope course uh, up in Tahoe for a couple days. And that was awesome because we were both doing it. It was very challenging. It really has to do with perceived fear when you're on a ropes course because you're not going to, you know, you're not going to hurt yourself. You're harnessed in. But it was a good opportunity for me to kind of inject some of those suggestions about how to talk to yourself. And I actually heard her doing a lot of great positive self-talk and um, setting yourself little goals. And so it was, a, it was a really great opportunity for us to do together. So, yeah, sure. I, I, I certainly look for those uh, moments where I can bring stuff up about how they can help themselves be confident and, and prepared for things at school, for example, also. Um, but who knows? I know what you mean. That definitely... When it's it, when it's the parent, it, it doesn't always 
uh, get absorbed in the same way. <laughs> no, but, and in two years, in trying. two years, she's going to meet a boy, and it's all out the window. All yeah, of that goes away. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Keep them in horses, oh. Tanya. Keep them in horses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We're going to oh let Deidre gracious. ask you the question she wrote to us, and I'm going to let you two talk mm-hmm. about it. Okay, great. Okay, so, Tanya, um, in June, I had – my question is that I'm losing – I've lost confidence after falling off my horse. In June, mm-hmm. I, I had a um, – a fall from my horse. I had to go to the ER. Um, nothing was broken, but I had a slight concussion. And then I thought I had, uh, you know, I had a couple weeks and then I thought I was recovered and I got back on the horse and we were doing something else. And then I had another fall and, um, you know, it was just like, and then I said to the owner, I said, I need to just take two weeks off to heal and figure out where I'm going from now, from there. Because I mean, mm-hmm. I've been riding this horse for eight months. We had, you know, done everything. I probably was getting overconfident that we were, you know, really doing well together. And, um, you know, looking back in hindsight, there are things I could have done differently. Maybe this wouldn't have happened. Um, but then it could also be that I'm not riding uh, balanced as well as I should be riding on this horse could be the issue of um, they used to ride her in a hackamore bridle, and I was just using like a um, you know a, a regular dressage bridle that she doesn't mm. seem to respond to at all. She does well with the hackamore, um, so it could have been a lot mm-hmm. of different things. Or did she have my mm-hmm. number that you know? Um, hey, if I dump her, then um, I can go in the barn and eat the hay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, do you, so anytime, you know, we come off, there's, there's definitely a lot of maybe different factors that were in play. So the physical factors in play are, are things that you would ideally be able to bounce around ideas with a trainer. Do you have someone that you lesson with or is there someone that would help you with like the bridal decision or that kind of thing? Yeah. Do you have anyone so I'm, like that? Okay. Yeah. So I'm taking um, weekly lessons with the owner in the oh, proper, in the proper equipment that works well for okay. summer. Gotcha. And, and actually that's going really well. Um, so my confidence is much better now than it was uh, the middle of oh, July, good. but also okay. because, you know, I'm well now. I'm, I don't hurt anywhere. Right. I, I, yeah. I haven't fall- Go ahead. Since I haven't fallen off a horse since I've been taking these lessons, everything's peachy. But then again, I'm not trying, I'm not asking her to do the things that may that subconsciously... Yes. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like that's a great, those are great steps of getting, getting good help, getting help on, you know, from a trainer in a lesson situation, feeling like you're making progress. So you're wanting more to build confidence now to also be riding on your own with more confidence. It sounds like the lessons are going well, but the confidence may still, you'd like to to gather that more up for, for riding her on your own. Right. And so I want to start You know, I want to do what I was doing beforehand. So what were Uh, you you doing? What what, what does that mean? Was that riding outside the ring or what what were you doing? Oh, oh yeah. Well, we were always riding outside of the ring, hacking out, you know, um, trailing to places. Um, But, you know, I want to canter her more. I want to, you know, try doing, you know, 18-inch jump course, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And is that, so are those things you can do in the lesson situation first where you feel like you're having this success? Okay. And so basically, you know, as you look at the last couple of months since, since those falls, one of the things you said was that you, you kind of looked back and there are things you might've been able to do differently and things have occurred to you that in those scenarios, you know, you understand a little bit about what happened, that's always really helpful to explore. And sometimes writing down like, okay, this is what the day was. Here's 
if I was going back in time, here are some maybe some different choices I could have made. So that you're really chronicling, okay, when faced with that same scenario again, here are perhaps some better choices that I would make either in my preparation or what I was thinking or, or in tack or what have you um, that, that perhaps could have helped me avoid that. You know, because that's a lot of um, when falls happen, if we can understand the mistake that was made or if it was just the horse being a horse, that should, you know, that those, these things happen. But there are often ways that you could have prevented the situation or been more proactive as something was happening, like as your horse was spooking or, or cantering off bucking, could you have done better, you know, to handle it so that you didn't actually fall off? So under, getting a really in-depth understanding of what happened and why can do a lot for putting fear at, to rest, right? Because then it's like, all right, so I understand what happened. I understand what I need to do next time. Now let me just strive to take my energy, take all the skills I have to ride these kinds of solutions and feel empowered with the answers, right, to that kind of challenging situation as I go forward. So as you, you know, as you describe wanting to canter more, you know, what do you do at the canter that helps you feel secure and solid in the tack? So in your lesson situation, it's great to, uh, to if you do some canter work in a lesson, think about after the lesson, all right, what was I doing that really helped me feel super secure today? What's a, what's a, like, is there any reminder your trainer has given you that really sort of clicked or stuck with you that helped you feel really like glued in and really connected with the horse? Uh, no, not, no. Okay. Have you done canter work with her? On yes. In the we, um, space? Yes, we did, we've done it on the lunch line, and I actually did it um, by myself with my daughter in the um, ring on Tuesday. Okay. And, okay. Um, okay. And that was good. So it I felt good. Okay. So I encourage you to really pay attention in the next few times you do some canter work to pick out a couple of um, instructions from your trainer or a couple of things that you reminded yourself that helped you canter that full lap around the arena or, do you know what I mean, helped you have success in that moment. You want to start tracking those successful experiences in a more specific way because then you're armed with better knowledge as you go forward then into the next time you ride or if you want to be able to canter by yourself you want to take all of that with you and be able to use self-talk and remind yourself of those good quality things that helped you be successful. Does that make okay. sense? So do you track yeah. your rides at all? Do you ever write those down? I have, uh, and, and I'm trying to do that more now. Mm-hmm. And so, so, yeah, exactly. So I encourage you to do that. At what I, I call those post-ride notes. There's all different ways to do that. But some of the things you may want to include are, for example, how you prepared for that ride. Okay? Like, did you make sure you got to the barn early and spent time tacking up? Did you make sure you had, you know, if you're coming after work, let's say, did you make sure you had a snack in the car on the way to the barn so you had good energy when you went to get on? Or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, you okay. also would want to include the little goals that you accomplished. So that's another, that's a, the biggest way to gain confidence is to start to recognize how your effort and attention help you progress. You want to be able to measure in even little, small, specific ways how your effort is paying off for you and you're feeling that even if it's just, you know, like through one corner of cancer work that you felt amazing. If you are able then to really Think about, why was that corner so good? Wow, I remember really sitting up really tall, let's say. I mean, that's just a random example, right, of something you might have noticed as you reflect right. back on that lesson. Then that would be something you'd want to know. Like, hey, when I sat up really tall, I had a really good corner. I remember on the left lead, I had a really great corner where I felt so imbalanced because I was stretching up tall. So that, even that, even like I said, no matter how, if it's, you know, four strides or an entire lap of the ring, 
it's a moment where you felt proud of your effort and you felt it pay off in your confidence. Those are kind of like gems. There's going to be a certain amount of gems in every ride. And you're, you're kind of your job then when you're finished with a ride is to kind of pick out all of those moments together because the more we do that, when we do that over a series of days and weeks, we start recognizing, hey, look at all these moments. When I, when I can string all this awareness together of these great moments, I'm starting to feel much better about how I am in the tack, the kind of success I'm generating with my horse. And I'm, then I'm really, you know, the, the wheels of confidence are really turning then when we start looking at those. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. And we, okay. all tend, so, we, all, so, we, we all tend to remember the, the two times out of the thousand rides that we fell off because those exactly. were the times that, you know, we went to the hospital. But, and then we, right. we tend to overlook the uh, 998 times that we stayed on and had mm-hmm. wonderful rides. And, and, and that's true. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this, Tanya. That's true in life, too. You know, we've all yep. been bucked off a few times in life as well. And we remember those times more than we remember the, the, the 360 days that were terrific that year. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know why that happens is because when, when your emotions come up and the adrenaline comes up of that fall or that mistake that made you so frustrated or embarrassed, it's, it's emotionally stamped. So when a memory gets emotionally stamped with a positive or a negative emotion, it's that much more powerful. So your job in, in going back and sort of logging your rides a bit, especially at a, a time like this for you, Deirdre, would be to positively stamp those rides. Remember those feelings of satisfaction and pride and excitement and really be able to drive home that night from the barn going, yes, that felt awesome. So consciously, and you're right, Glenn, it's in our culture, our habit is much more to pay more attention to those negatively stamped moments, right? Because yeah. that just kind of comes up naturally. That's just, bam, it's there. The embarrassment or we're red in the face or, you know what I mean, that, that physiological reaction is attached. But with, with a little bit of, of, of thought, we can really understand, oh, yeah, that was the moment I felt really good about. Let me, let me polish that. Let me look at that and, and sort of honor that in a way. And that's going to lead then to me feeling more confident as I go forward into my next ride. So I would, I would definitely recommend that for you. Deirdre is just tracking those kinds of moments and not just, oh, I had six steps of canter that were good, but why? Like, what did you do? So when I asked you, what are some things your trainer has, has, told, have to, has told you that help you feel balanced or strong at the canter and you weren't really able to think of anything, maybe that just means let's pay more attention, right? So okay. the next week, pay more attention to what's being said at the canter or ask more questions. Like what, what do you think I should pay attention to in, in the way I'm riding? You know, you can prompt your trainer too, to help you out there um, okay. so that you have some nice specifics because from those specific, well, so let's say like, give me a guess. What, what's something you think your trainer would say about that? Well, what, what do you think well, she, she might tell you? Well, she did say uh, if I stand tall and I pull my tummy in, um, I'll mm-hmm. have a better trot and actually oh. when I did do that it worked um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things like okay. that okay so that's a good example of, of something that from that lesson you'd want to be able to make note of and then is going into a ride on your own that can become a great what I call performance goal something for you to focus on that's totally within your control that you know links to your success so there you are grooming your horse and getting ready to, to ride that day. And you're thinking about, okay, so one of my goals today is going to be really pulling my core in and staying super tall with my body. Like, and okay. even, it's a, even reminding yourself of that as you get on and you're warming up at the walk, thinking about, okay, what do I want to accomplish at the trot today? So I, I'm already experimenting with how my core feels how am I lengthening my spine? You're getting yourself focused on that great solution, right? So the solution is engaging the core and staying tall, right? But when we focus on that before even the trot, then we're we're just generating a, a, a better probability of success in the trot. Do you, okay. do you see where that's what I mean by that? So we're yeah. sort of priming, we're going to prime our focus ahead of time 
with some very small performance goals. I'd love for you to have some small performance goals like that for your canner, since you said that was one of your more more big goals, right, of doing more canner work and can, doing canner yes. work on your own, right? right. So you want to sort of be able to have those nice, specific things, because when we've had falls, right, then sometimes we do have some nerves, which is natural, but really we want to get underneath that and recognize, hey, part of nerves is just our body's way of saying, okay, something important is going on. I need to generate some energy, okay? So when I've generated this energy, your body doesn't naturally know where it should go, right, if these are things you're still learning, so when you go to canner, you might feel a little butterflies in your stomach. You want to be able to say to those butterflies, great, here are the two things I need help with. And, and maybe we use the core, the, you know, engaging the core example, just because we've already mentioned that. So maybe that's something you think about for the canner work also. And you say, okay, butterflies, guess what? You're going to help me engage my core and stay really strong through my midsection and my back, my low back, so that I feel nice and balanced and really connected to the saddle. Okay. Just so you see what I'm saying? Because the energy is going to come up anyway. We need to have a really productive place to send the energy. And those kind of small goals that hopefully will generate, be generated by your trainer and by your own mm-hmm. knowledge of your riding, right? Then, right? then you have a place for that energy to go. So those are a couple of ideas, right? So the ideas of sort of doing some logging, doing some journal work as far as your rides go, noticing your positive during each ride, for sure, right? Being right. able to point out the moments of success there. And then also doing some really good paying attention for, all right, what should some of my performance goals be? What are some things that I can focus on? So instead of just feeling nervous and having that sort of lock me up and then I end up working against my horse, let me use that energy for these small performance goals that I have faith in that are going to help me stay safe, stay strong in the saddle, and and gather my confidence by knowing, ooh, these are the things I want to focus on. These are the things that are going to help. Well, uh, we're, running that, out of, we're running out of time here. Yeah. Does that help, Deidre, you think? Yes, yes, it does. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah, it's terrific. It and helps me a lot too. <laughs> you know, I'm taking notes and, over here. And it's funny because everything you were saying you can correlate to your life in general, not just riding a horse. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think Tanya, yes, your book your your book, what's it called again? Inside your ride. Is the same way. If you take a look and read that book and start thinking in general, it's it's that book is about life. It happens to focus in on riding, but it's also about life. It's the same thing you were talking about with your kids earlier. All of the things that you teach right. as a riding coach right. or a mental coach for riders is the same thing that you could teach about life. Absolutely. They all are doubles as, as life skills. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the more you think about them in your everyday life, the more that, you, that they will pay off for you in the saddle. So it is something to pay attention to, absolutely, that that fluid sort of back and forth between. And I talk a lot about that. So, yeah, absolutely. Good good eye there, Glenn. <laughs> well, uh, Tanya, where can people find the book if they want it? So it's on Amazon, uh, and it's on horsebooksetc.com. On Amazon, you can find it as a Kindle book, uh, an e-book, and then also in paperback. And what's it called again? Give the name again. So it's Inside Your Ride, Mental Skills for Being Happy and Successful with Your Horse. Very good. Thank you, Tanya. We appreciate it. Deidre, thank you so much for sending us the email. If anybody else wants to do that, they can just drop it to to Glenn at HorseRadioNetwork.com or Helena at HorseRadioNetwork.com, and we'd be happy to get somebody on to help you out. So we appreciate that, Deidre. All right, thanks, thank guys. Thank you, Tanya. All right, thank you thank so much. You. Oh, thank you. Have a great thank day. You. Good luck, Deirdre. This Tack and Habit segment is sponsored by Riding Warehouse at ridingwarehouse.com. Today's Tag and Habit product is brought to you by Riding Warehouse with the help of Bree Del Rosario. So, Bree, I've been looking for the perfect replacement halter for my horse forever, like years, because um, 
Well, first of all, I'm always interested in safety. And the other thing is I really hate it when the fittings on a halter get all pinchy and chopped up and broken. So I'm always looking for solid brass fittings. You guys have, you guys meaning Riding Warehouse, um, has something called the Horse Education Hybrid Halter Rope and Nylon Combo. So it looks like it offers a lot more <laughs> than the features I'm looking yes. for. <laughs> Um, yeah. but it does, it does start out with one of my favorite things, which is solid brass fittings. What else does this awesome looking halter do? Well, this is really the perfect blend between rope halter and nylon halter. So a lot of our customers we found have one of each because they want, um, you know, to have the benefits of both worlds. But in this case, you just need one halter. And I can't say enough things about the quality of the halter. It's handmade in the USA. Um, so it's and about 45 minutes goes into each um, the knotting of each halter. So it's extremely uh, well made. And um, like you said, the solid brass hardware won't rust over time. Um, in addition, the uh, the rope is actually UV resistant. So it's not going to fade. You know how those rope halters tend to fade in the sun if you leave them outside. And um, these will resist fading. Um, what I love about it is it's all the benefits of the rope and the nylon combined. So the nose piece is a rope halter with extremely well strategically placed knots. A lot of times I find that the knots on the rope halter are too far apart. So when you're trying to, you know, especially training a young horse or dealing with a horse that may have poor ground manners, I find that the knots are too wide, and so they don't push into the horse's pressure points on either side of the nose. Oh. These are kind of more towards the middle. Yeah, so these are going to give you a lot of control. Pretty much will eliminate the need if you ever use a chain on your horse. This is not only more humane, um, but I think it's probably more effective because the knots are placed exactly perfectly. Um, the nice thing is then the rope continues down below the chin and also the attachment um, between the chin and the throat latch is rope. The throat latch is off the rope, um, which lens took a sliding ring along the chin. Um, that's nice because you don't have a fixed ring. Uh, if your horse is going kind of side to side on you on the ground, um, the sliding mm. ring kind of prevents them from getting any sort of leverage against you, you know, when they kind of cock their head. Um, if it's a fixed ring, which most are, or that center knot in the um, lead rope, you don't really have any, you know, anywhere to go with it. This slides 180 degrees underneath your horse's chin. Um, wow. So there's another really nice uh, feature. What I also love is a lot of people like to pull those nylon um, halters over their horse's head. They undo the throat latch snap. and like yep. to pull them over kind of like a bridle. Yep. Um, so this has a throat latch snap, which I've never seen a rope halter have before. Um, I can't so do without the throat latch nice. snap. <laughs> you, it, yeah, I, and so that's... Yeah. Yeah, it saves tons of time. You don't have to readjust every time. Um, you also don't have to, you know, fumble around with um, putting that the tongue in the um, particular holes if, if you're out trying to catch a horse really quick. So it saves you time there. Um, and then all the benefits of nylon. So nylon halters, you can personalize them, first of all. You can put name plates on them or engrave them. So the cheek pieces on this halter are nylon, that nylon webbing, um, really high quality. So you can go ahead and personalize it just like a normal halter. It's also nylon above on the crown which if you ever ride with your horse's halter under the bridle and you use a rope halter, you probably notice that the knots kind of get in the way and get caught up in the crown piece of your bridle. Um, so this is nice because it's a flat nylon piece underneath the bridle. So it's not going to rub on the mane or anything. It's going to lie really nice and flat and tends to uh, leave the bridle above it really nice. Um, it's kind of out of the way, so it's not those knots rubbing against your horse. And the rope, I think it's usually two layers of rope there, so it tends to get in the way. Um, so that's a really nice feature as well. I think it's a really nice control. I mean, if you have a baby, um, they, it comes in small, which will probably fit most yearlings. So if you have a young horse, this is a really nice training tool. Um, the sliding ring is great for lunging too. They can't, like I said, they can't kind of lock up on you. Uh, so that's really nice. And yeah, all the nice features, uh, the, uh, the brass snaps. Uh, one thing people don't always notice you can see it more on the colored ones on our website. We have a blue and red, and we also have the standard black. Um, there's some nice English bridle leather uh, that attaches the nose band to those uh, cheek rings there. And so that's just for extra durability and support there. Um, so it's not going to wear down. And what's also nice is those side rings. If you've ever tried cross-tying in a rope halter, you know, you either have to go attached to that flimsy, 
you know, nose band, or you have to attach both cross ties to the underneath the chin. Um, but this has those side rings, so you can cross tie them just like a regular nylon halter. So tons of benefits. I can't say better things about the halter. Um, you will definitely get your money's worth. I know that at first, the price, we have it priced right now at $69.95. Of course, it ships free within the contiguous United States since it's over $50. So it's just going to be a standard $69.95. Um, I know that's a little bit pricey. It sounds pricey off the gate, out, you know, right out of the gate, but uh, all the features I explained, you're probably not going to have to get all or for a long time, if ever. So I think it's definitely worthwhile. Awesome. Awesome. So, and it, wait, there was one last thing. It comes in three cute colors. Yeah, wow. three cute colors, three different sizes, too. Three different um, sizes, so and you like said the small was yes. was good for sort of a yearling size. Medium, I'm assuming, is like horse size, and then large would be for draft and oversized horses. Yeah, exactly. And I think the okay. small will probably accommodate most standard like yearlings, or if you have like an Arab with a smaller head, I'd probably go for the small. Um, of course, we have our free uh, exchange program within the contiguous U.S., so you can always return it free of charge, and we'll ship you out the right size if it's not correct. But I think medium would fit most of our um, everyday horses, and then, like you said, the large for the maybe for the warm bloods and the oversized heads. Lovely. Well, I think it's a a great value, and of course, it sounds like you've got the customer service to back it up. Um, and that is right. the <laughs> horse education hybrid halter rope and nylon combo, sixty nine ninety five at ridingwarehouse.com. Bree, thank you for bringing another great product to the Stable Scoop show. Tack and Habit is never going to be the same <laughs> now that Glenn and I are addicted <laughs> to Riding Warehouse. So thank you for coming on Perfect. and bringing another good product. Another great show and three great guests. One, two, three. Is that three or four? Four. Four great guests in one right. show. Four great four. Is that six people on one show? You can't ask for any more than that in a show. No, no, no. So that was a good show. I love it. I love the um, the exchange between um, uh, Deirdre and Tanya. Yes. We're going to have to try and do that more often. So write to us if you have a question. Say, just email us or go on the website, and uh, there's a little contact form on there you can do as well. And, of course, you can find all the past episodes of the Stable Scoop radio show at stablescoop.com. All the links to all of our guests and everything are on there. And you can also get our app, iOS or Android, by searching for Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free, and it's easy to use. You can find Helena at... Helena at horseradionetwork.com. And... Helena at Sp- actually, if you log on to sparkleandboom.com, that's how we pay the bills around my farm, sparkleandboom.com. Thank you, Helena. You catch on so quick. Uh- <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> if you want details about today's show, did you just do this? I did. Go to Stable Scoop. To- okay. Yes. Cut that. Why? What? I'm just. Be sure to bored. visit all the other great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Well, Helena, that's it for this week. Thank you, Glenn, for following the script, which I desperately need. I think that's plenty this week, but there will be more next week. Until then, happy scooping. Happy scooping.